name is Tiana Leiden. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm here tonight to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I was born here in Spokane on September 28th, 1981 to Larry and Jane. I have one older brother who is two years older. Uh, I grew up in Elk, Washington, and I lived in the same home my whole entire childhood. Uh, my dad always worked a full-time job, and my mom worked part-time when my brother and I got a little older. I grew up in church, and I went every Sunday as far back as I can remember. I went to Sunday school, and I memorized a lot of verses and had read the entire Bible by the time I was around 12. I do not remember the name of the program, but it was similar to Awana's. Uh, around the age of seven, I accepted Jesus into my heart as my Savior. I was a good kid, and I got good grades. Uh, my parents were great. I really didn't think so at the time, but I really admire their parenting now. They were not perfect, but they kept us in church. My mom is a great example of a genuine Christian woman and the love of Christ. Uh, as a child, I grew up riding horses. I was in 4-H. I rode my pony in the local parades. I entered the peewee rodeos, and I also decorated cakes and entered them in the fair. I played soccer at age five up until my sophomore year in high school. In middle school, I played basketball. When I was about 12, uh, my neighbor's baby drowned in a giant tub of dog water that was in their front yard. He was two years old, and I babysat him all the time. I remember seeing his mother in active addiction. I noticed using to cope and keep going. In sixth grade, I graduated the D.A.R.E. program. I, <laughs> I do not remember ever thinking drugs were bad or that I would never do them. I didn't know what they were. Around 13 or 14, I got caught shoplifting when I was at the store with my friend and her mom. Around age 15, I smoked pot for the very first time. Shortly after I started smoking pot, I moved on to drinking and got drunk for the first time. I started hanging out with older boys who were high school dropouts. Not only did I sneak out at night, I hitchhiked places, went to parties, and got rides home with people I'd never met before. I was caught sneaking out a couple different times at a friend's house, but her mom never told my parents, and I thought she was so cool. Um, I was caught by my parents a couple times and would be grounded for the summer. <laughs> in high school, I got into a falling out with a good friend and some of my other girlfriends at a party. I have not been friends with them since then. Uh, my mom was concerned, but I didn't tell her that I got so wasted and do not know what I said or did, and none of my friends will talk to me. After that summer of being grounded for the whole time, I met Lucas. He was from California. He lived close to my house, and he had a car, so I didn't have to hitchhike or walk anymore. The pot smoking and drinking started with him and my new friends. We spent a lot of time together, and shortly after we started dating, I was introduced to crank, or what we call meth nowadays. I didn't like it at all, and I continued to use it. I spent a lot of sleepless nights at weird houses or skateboarding under the freeway downtown. Being with him, life was exciting, crazy, and different. Lucas and I dated till I was almost 17, and the majority of the time I was using whatever, meth, cocaine, weed, mushrooms, and drinking daily. Most of the time we were having fun, but things started to change. I remember sobering up for about a month, and it didn't last because I was still around addicts. I still had the same friends who were actively using and hanging out at the same place that I was. I spent a lot of time with these friends daily after school and work. During this time, I worked part-time, and I did manage to graduate high school when I was a junior. After graduation, I continued drinking and using drugs. Later that year, I met my oldest son's biological father, John. Again, I was drinking and going to parties. A month after I turned 18, I found out I was pregnant. I was pretty excited. I always knew that I would be a mom. My boyfriend was 27, and he wanted to go meet my parents and tell them that we were having a baby. 
I didn't tell my parents. I still lived at home and I hid the pregnancy until I was about four months along and then my dad found out. One of my friends went home and told his dad that I was pregnant. He worked with my dad and then the next time he saw him, he mentioned how excited he must be to be a grandpa. My dad had no idea what he was talking about. He confronted me and I told him I was pregnant. I moved out of my parents' house not too long after that. Towards the end of the pregnancy, I broke up with John. And after my son was born, I picked up smoking pot all the time and now selling it. When he was about five months old, I met the biological father of my other children. I thought we were the perfect match. We both liked to smoke weed all the time. He started using meth and I did occasionally too. He worked in construction but always had excuses on why he didn't or couldn't go to work. Several months after we met, he moved in with me and I found out I was pregnant with my second child. Boy was I dreading telling my parents about baby number two. It was during this pregnancy that I had my first encounter with CPS due to an issue at my doctor's office. The doctor was asking about my boyfriend and of course I covered for him and told them what a great guy he was. The next couple times I went home, there was a CPS card in my apartment door. We went down to talk to them and they closed the case. My son was born a couple months later. Again, CPS knocked on my door. I ended up talking to the social worker a few days later. She asked me to take a drug test and I said, no problem, even though I knew it was a problem. I went down to task and gave a dirty way that afternoon. I had no idea who these CPS people were, but they really scared me. I started doing random UAs and had to call each day to see if my color had been called. But I had it figured out that I would at least get high a couple times a week. I had drug counseling and an evaluation where I faked my way through. I passed all my UAs except the last one. That same day, the CPS worker showed up to give me the good news that she was closing the case. Again, I went back to smoking pot and drinking occasionally. During this time, I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with a girl that I worked with. Of course, I believed his lies and took him back. We then moved out of our apartment and into a little house and stayed there for about six months. We then moved to Missoula, Montana, where my parents had moved a couple years prior. I thought that it was great. We were trying to start a new life and in a different area. He convinced me that he would do better if we moved to a new area. Not a whole lot of change was seen in him, and I thought he was the one that needed to change, not me. We continued drinking and smoking, and we would party sometimes with our new neighbors. I always blamed him for all of his mistakes and all of my problems. I found out I was pregnant with my third child, and we moved back to the Spokane area. After my daughter was born, I was pretty happy with my new baby and being closer to my friends. The cycle of drinking and smoking started again. We moved to the Hilliard area when my daughter was a couple weeks old. After a couple of days, I noticed the neighbor was selling dope out of his garage. And I had just moved into this place that was supposed to be a nice little area and the kids had a yard to play in and ride their bikes. Instead, I had a bunch of addicts trying to talk to my little kids. During this time, I was going to school and working at a local rehab hospital. It was very stressful living next to someone who was selling drugs. The neighbor eventually got raided and went to prison, and I was sitting in the front yard playing with my kids when he got raided. I was pretty upset and hated my life and was sick of all the addicts that were always around me. I relapsed a couple times on meth while living there. I had a lot of hatred towards drug addicts, thieves, and all the people that were around me. I thought that I did not have a choice and that's just how it was. We were evicted after the rent wasn't paid for several months in a row and moved. I was happy to get out of that place, but it was only temporary happiness because my life was pretty much a living hell. I had really high anxi anxiety levels and was also depressed. Shortly after we moved, I found out I was pregnant with my fourth baby. I just wanted to be a normal couple and have a normal family. When my youngest was around one, he was offered a my boyfriend was offered a job in Alaska. 
He left town and I liked the change. I had never been away from him for more than three days at a time in about eight or nine years. Uh, we split up. And during this time, I met my future husband. He was a good friend of mine and I was a pen pal while he was in prison. He stopped by after doing five years in prison. <laughs> he was really kind and sweet and helped me with the kids. He was a lot different than when I knew him before he went to prison. And he invited me to go to church with him. <coughs> On the way, he was telling me that we were going to hit the night service also at 7. And I was horrified. I remember my jaw dropping and thinking we haven't even made it to the morning service. <laughs> I was really scared. I was really antisocial. And I had only been to church a handful of times since I had moved out of my parents' house. We went, and I felt different because I hadn't been in the presence of God in a long time. We did go back that night and started going on Wednesdays also. I remember sitting in church after I rededicated my life to the Lord and thought that it felt so good to be home. A lot of it I did not understand, but I was broken, beat down, and I decided to try Jesus. I cried a lot of tears on that altar. Tracy was going to celebrate recovery on Friday nights at Community Bible Chapel with another girl that we knew. And I started going because I didn't want him going with her. <laughs> I went and told myself that I was addicted to addicts. FYI, every single guy that I ever, ever dated was a meth addict. Uh, this was the summer of 2009 and Tracy and I started dating. Shortly after that, I relapsed. I will never forget deciding to do meth again for the first time after many years clean. Mid-December, I sent Tracy to pick the kids up because I was sick. He never made it to the daycare because he was smashed between two cars. He was put on several pain medications and I started smoking his pills. I was using them daily and he was laid up in bed for about six months. The whole time we went to church, and celebrate recovery most of the time. And most of the time we were at least a half an hour late. The using became more consistent and went from weekends to full blown hourly using. I did not do anything other than get the kids off to school and make meals for them. I stayed in my room or in the basement all the time except when we went to church. And while I was there I always felt like God was speaking directly to me. This went on for a year and a half, and Tracy was arrested on a probation violation and went to jail. The first time was for 19 days, and I kept using. The second time he went to jail, he called me crying from booking. He apologized and said that he loved me and wanted to marry me. He did 40 days, and I was clean for 40 days. During that time, I planned our wedding on March 13, 2011, I married the love of my life at Spokane Christian Fellowship, where we had been going to church for the past couple of years. I was pretty excited for our new life to begin. I relapsed that night and went right back to the addiction that I thought I was free of. And that time, it was for about six months until the police department kicked in my bedroom door and my husband was arrested again and we thought it would only be for 90 days. It ended up being for 27 months. At that time, we had only been married for six months. I still went to church, even though I was an addict. I used for a couple more months, and during this time, I had another run-in with CPS. They kept coming by, and I kept refusing to let them in. I would pray and pray that God would get me out of this one. I never heard from them again. During this time without my husband there, my house was robbed, cars were impounded, and there was just a lot of drama. I decided that it was time to sober up. When I was using, I always felt like I did not belong. I kept on going to church, kept trusting God, and I kept going to celebrate recovery. My life changed when I decided to go to small groups. Listening to other women being brutally honest about their lives changed my life. This taught me how to be honest with myself and others. I knew that God was going to help 
going to somehow help me. I didn't know when or how, but I knew that he would. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I cried a lot of tears. I had to change my phone number multiple times. My phones would just break for no reason. That was God because I lost all my phone numbers. I would get clean for a few days and relapse. I couldn't even answer my door because it was always someone using. The devil sent more people my way when I decided to clean up than I had seen in a long time. November 21st, 2011 is my clean date. <laughs> First Corinthians 10:13 says, "No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it." On December 31st, 2011, I was baptized by Pastor Danny at Family of Faith. It was one of the best decisions that I have ever made. A few months later, I was served an eviction notice, even though my rent was paid in full. I didn't understand at the moment, but I understood later that it was God. I knew that God would work it out. I had a little bit of money saved, $500 exactly. I had been looking for a new place to rent, and I really did not like talking to people. I prayed that God would open the door that he wanted me to go through and close the ones he did not. I was praying for a landlord that wouldn't ask me a whole lot of questions that I would have to answer with a whole lot of lies. I found a house in the valley and called on it and went and looked at it. Pretty much no questions asked and only a $500 deposit. <laughs> that was God. I moved in like a month later and that's where we still live. God removed me from the old neighborhood where everyone in town knew where I lived and gave me a new neighborhood that was so nice and quiet. It was truly a blessing. After we moved, I finally rescheduled the job interview that I'd missed twice about seven months prior. I got hired and worked there until last year, which was almost nine years. In January of 2014, my husband got out of prison after 27 months. In March, we got to spend our third wedding anniversary together. The first and second, he was locked up. I thought that once he got home, or since I was off drugs, that life would be easier. And it's not. It's just easier to deal with the things that are thrown my way because of the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit and the guidance that comes from the Lord. About six months after Tracy got home, our niece came to live with us due to her parents being in active heroin addiction. We were given custody of her by CPS and the state of Washington. God answers prayers, he really does. Many times the outcome doesn't at the time look like the right answer, but everything works out just the way he planned and in his time. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in a, and a future. For the past six years, I've been serving at Celebrate Recovery in Mead, alongside my husband and many other people who have become my closest friends. I have been a women's small group leader at Celebrate Recovery and Life Recovery. I have met many people who love Jesus and are super supportive of my recovery and my family. I go camping with many of you here during the summer, and I absolutely love doing life with you. I get to go to Bible study with an awesome group of ladies that God has placed in my life, and I get to call them my friends. I opened my own small business last year, and it is doing well. Today I stand here clean for 10 years and five months by the grace of God. Jessica and Alicia Doney are going to do women's coins now. Yeah, but Jessica gets the mic. <laughs> I tried. I tried really hard. I was. She won't give it up. She won't take it. 
<laughs> Go take it. Two things I want to point out to Jessica is that we're blessed to do life with, or Tiana, sorry. I'm still talking to you. Tiana, is that we're blessed to get to do life with you, and we're honored to have you in our Bible study and call you our friend. We love you. So I've never done this before, but the first thing I thought of was um, my boss sent out an email this morning that said, are you willing to look foolish for the sake of learning something new? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then I got here and I was informed I'm up here today. And I was like, OK, next time I do the uh, accept all, I'm going to make sure my glasses are on and I'm not <laughs> signing up or something. I'm, I'm shaking. So what's the first thing I do up here? Well, I know that. I mean, do I have to do anything before I call out the coins? OK. All right. So I know somebody out here might be a little bit nervous. I don't want you to be nervous. We all started there. We all had to take the first step. And uh, so if anybody here has one day, anybody? Or one hour? Women, yeah, I'm talking to the ladies right now. <laughs> What's the next one? 30 days, 30 days. <laughs> Yay, Wendy! Woo! to give out my first coins. <laughs> 60 days. 60 days. Come on up here. twice <laughs> apparently not sold <laughs> we'll save it for next time what's next six months six months anybody got six months anybody nine months <laughs> I'll get through this somehow I'm sweating it is the lights Ben it is the lights <laughs> one year You owe me some red high tops for that. <laughs> one year, one year. One year? 18 months. Nobody has 18 months? Oh, two years. <laughs> okay, I got it from here. Two years. Three years. Four years? Anybody above five years? Is that it for the ladies? All right. Tim, 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 and Matt, Matt, Matt. All right, so they wanted me to share a little testimony. Um, I got three years and about four months clean time. But um, I, sh I actually spoke about 10 months ago on a point night, and that night I shared about how my car was stolen, and um, I went, I, well, it wasn't really stolen. They took it, and then I went to rehab, and then it was theirs for a couple times there. But that night that I spoke, um, when I came home, they, the Spokane County, called at about nine o'clock and when they're calling it's usually not a good thing but I had reported it stolen about a year after um, I went to rehab and they had found it in Kennewick and so when I when I lost it you know the gas door was off because I left with the gas 
in my car and rip the thing off. And so when I left it, it was kind of like broke down a little bit. When I got it back, that they had fixed that. Um, so it had been with like, you know, drug addicts for almost two and a half years. And I got it back and I just needed a new battery. So why am I sharing that? Just to give you guys hope, you know, God can do miracles. Maybe you're not going to get a car back that was stolen and have it looking better than it was when you left it. But, you know, he can restore relationships. He can get your kids back. He can do bigger things than that. So I just wanted to share that just to encourage you guys. Yeah, I know him. It's pretty awesome. You know, uh, I remember nine years ago at Family of Faith, I was, I was working in the children's ministry, and I remember Tiana showing up with her crew of little rugrats. They were little tiny ones back then. Jada was tiny, super fast, like she could outrun all the boys when they showed up. And now Jada has herself a little baby. It's kind of awesome to, to see the growth in people as they, they grow in their relationship with Christ. That was the very first time uh, I had ever heard her testimony. And when I found out this morning she was giving her testimony, I immediately uh, messaged her and told her I was, I was praying for her. Because, you know, uh, when you knuckle up to the devil, it, 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 you're going to get some, some hard knocks back at you. The evil one is he's tricky. He's sneaky. He's an accuser. He's going to tell you you're not good enough. You're not going to, you know, reach out to anybody. You're not going to be able to touch anybody. All these things are going to come at you. Well, I prayed for her this morning. Um, how many men are getting coins tonight? Can I see some hands? Hands? All the men? Okay, well, now I'm going to pray for each one of you because you just gave a testimony of the hope that we have in Christ. By raising your hand, you're telling the evil one, he ain't got no, no handle on you no more. You know what I mean? It's because you have that freedom. So I want to pray for you right now before we even get started. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the, all the victories that, um, that are shown here tonight. As each person comes up to this stage, Lord, and um, receives these coins, it's not about the coin. It's about the freedom that you give to us, that we can celebrate that freedom with each one of our, our friends and your sons and daughters. We just ask that you would protect them. I ask for warring angels to surround each one of these um, sisters and brothers of mine, Lord, that um, nothing evil can penetrate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Whew. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's a little bit bright, but but you see these eyebrows? I just trimmed them. Otherwise, they, they, they don't even bug me because my eyebrows are usually just like, bam. But, uh, <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So tonight, I'm just going to ask if there's anybody out there that um, just has one day that they're celebrating today. I know this is the, the scariest step that you could ever make is standing up and coming up here and getting your one day. But it's the most important step. Uh, where are we at? 30 days? Anybody got 30 days? One month? Anybody got 60 days? Hey, I just want to throw this out there, a little uh, prayer plug. That if somebody is sitting next to you that just got a coin, grab their coin. Pray for it. You know, uh, there's nothing more powerful than to grab that coin and pray over that thing and then hand it back to them just saturated in prayer. You know, that, yes, amen. That's my part, favorite part of, of getting a coin. So I'm, I'm going to go hunt you down and get your coin from you. Let's go say that. Where are we at? Oh, we're only at 60 days? Yeah, I talk a lot. Sorry. <laughs> anybody, anybody got 90 days? That's three months. I'm, I'm good at math, though. Just gonna say that. Six months. That's like a half a year. About halfway there. Nine months. Woo! That's it. We got celebrate coming up. Buddy. Precious coins. Anybody got one year? Oh man, Adam!
18 months? That's a year and a half? No, two years? Three years? Four years? No, you got four years. I just want to give a shout out to my God, Jesus Christ. Uh, I haven't seen my son Weston in two and a half years, and I got to see him for the first time last Friday. And I got to have a, you know, I got to go back there on the sixth and the seventh, and then I got to have him for the Memorial Day weekend and Fourth of July. And yeah, and he gets to come back home with me. So. We serve a God of reconciliation, and I know this man's going to be reconciled with his son forever. I don't know how the Lord's going to pull that one off, but he knows. Praise the Lord. Where are we at? Five years? That's a half a decade? Six years? Seven years? Eight years? Nine years? So I know there's one that's coming up here that's a full decade. This man is a... Um, a very important piece in my recovery. I wouldn't be standing here today if he uh, if he didn't take that step into a very dark place. He stepped into my basement, and yeah, dude, I'm just gonna tell you this. This was where my comfort zone was in. I was a recluse. You you wouldn't even know me back then because you know me today and who I am today. And I'm a I'm a talker. Not then. I was in my cave. You know, I was locked down. The devil had me exactly where he wanted me to be, and I was just stuck. In a, in a basement all by myself. And this man, he, he braved that basement. He came in, he opened up that door, and he walked in, and he invited me to a church service. And I'm going to tell you, it changed my life from that day forward. I was not sober when I went to church. I was going to church for six, seven months before I ever got sober. I was pretty high. But in that six or seven months of continuing to be invited to church, to come to church, I just slowly but surely just seen something a little bit different and wanted something a little different in my life. And when I seen this man's eyes, when he got his first year, that one coin, they went, man, I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I want that. What the heck is that? You know what I mean? It was like there was something in my little brother that had changed in his life forever. And I wanted that. I seen that, you know. So when you come up and get your coin, don't think it's just for you. There's somebody out here watching you that sees, like, man, what the heck is going on with this dude? You know, he's got a pep in his step, a little walk in his talk. So, anyhow. <laughs> So I'm like, well, you know, hey, I'm a rhymer, I didn't even know it, but anyhow, I got to make something funny before I start bawling my eyes out. Anyhow, I would like to welcome up my little brother, Nick Eli, he's got 10 years, one full decade, my man. <laughs> 